Hey, good morning from Walla Walla, Washington. What we have here is the exotic Moor Jaipur and the even more exotic uh, tree taper boring head. Doing a practical job that uh, it's almost cheating. And uh, I'm going to show this job uh, later down on a wave. But uh, if you have uh, this device and um, a wall helper head, you can accomplish some stuff that uh, is, uh, can only be done on a lathe. So uh, let's have some fun with this thing, and I'll show you how, how it's set up. And it's a, it's a little bit different than one might think, so we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that right away. Okay, I'll get you up here. Try to find a good spot for you. I think right here. I got it all dialed in there within a ten thousandth of an inch. And that's pretty good, I say. Okay. I think that's a pretty good view. Okay. Now let me explain how this thing works. It's got a slide here. And uh, I got it adjusted for the angle I need to cut on this, uh, this chuck. This is the locating angle here. And uh, I inspected the spindle nodes and uh, the uh, chucks. And generally the spindle nodes are close to 7 degrees. And the, and the uh, chuck tapers are... Uh, around seven, uh, seven degrees, 30 minutes, uh, you know, 20 minutes, something like that. So the, uh, the taper is opened up a little bit more. So the spindle nose, the very end of the nose will uh, contact first. Uh, that's better than the back of the, of the nose. So that's why they do that. This, this isn't like the biggest deal in the world. Uh, this machine here um, is actually more accurate than the machines the chuck were made on. <laughs> so, okay. Now, to set this thing up, I got the angle here, see? And to, uh, once you get the angle in, when you hold this collar, then, then this slide feeds down. So, um, to basically uh, put the tool in the right position it's on a taper here this uh, bar and um, let's see um, so to uh, cut deeper you move the spindle closer okay now I'll show you how to quickly set it up now in the back here here's uh, the lock. This is a lock nut, and you loosen it. Then you stick the key all the way in, and then you can uh, adjust the uh, travel of the, the uh, slide. See? Okay. So what you do is uh, juggle it around and get it so when you lower the spindle that this contacts, and then you can move it and check it to see it, you know, that you don't have it, um, you know, too tight any particular way, have the angle off too much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift it right there, and I'm gonna lock it. So, right there it's locked. Okay, I'm going to bring it around. I'm going to make sure this knob's loose. Now, when I turn the machine on, it'll start cutting. So, I got it so it's contacting. So, I'm going to drop it down. I have a gauge up here. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, this, uh, you know, depth thing there. So, I'm going to drop it down just, uh, just a couple of thousands. Okay, that's about 2,000. Make sure the clutch is tight and all this stuff's locked up on this jig board machine. 
Ah, there we go. I like that right there. Okay, I'm going to start it up. Get it in gear. Now, when it feeds, um, I'm going to have my hand on this collar and hold it. And uh, this is the standard head in each revolution. Um, the slide will travel five thousandths of an inch. Now, if it's going too fast and chatters, I'll just let this slip a little. Okay, let's get it going. I think we're in a good spot. Okay, all in gear. I think I got a good speed. About 286. Okay, let's start feeding it. It's cutting. See, I'll let the collar slip a little bit. Get just a little bit better finish. Start to chatter slightly. See, I'm letting it slip quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to stop it. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Take and unlock it. And run it back. Oh, get it out of gear here. Flip it around. Okay. Now, if I want to take a deeper cut, um, I just uh, lower, lower the, the spindle and uh, it'll take a deeper cut because uh, the taper gets smaller at the bottom. See, that's, it, it's very simple. And what else can I say about this thing? Probably not a whole lot because it is that simple. But let's let's see it. Let's have a look at that finish. Okay. Get up close there and look at the tree head finish. I don't think it heard a little bit of chatter, but it's not bad. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, pull this out and check it on the wave outside when it quits raining. It's just raining cats and dogs right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull that tool all the way out. And that's the tool I found. It's just a salvage tool, left-hand uh, lathe tool. There's another attachment. I think I'll show you real quick if it's handy. Not there. Oh, I just had it. Oh, here it is here. Now, this attachment here will hook on the, this tool holder. And uh, you can drop that uh, through a hole like that and, and cut on the back of something. Or you can use it to uh, extend uh, the tool out to cut further. Now, I've used this uh, on a bridge port for uh, a long, long time, and it worked fine. But uh, it uh, works a lot better on this uh, jig boring machine just because of uh, how solid it is. So, in, in uh, one of the videos, I uh, faced this with the wall hopter head. And now I cut, recut the taper using the tree head. Now you can, you can face with the tree head by turning it at 90, but you see that slide has real limited travel. It might have enough to do that, I don't know. But the wall hopper is quite a bit more convenient. Okay, I thought I'd show that. Now this is just some basic... Uh, mounting the chucks to uh, these old beat up chucks that I uh, got used to uh, 
the old beat up axle so the way that I used. But the chucks will fit. And uh, what's happened with these chucks is they just got kicked around over the years. And I think this chuck here is probably 60 years old. So it's in pretty good shape for that. Okay, I'm going to get back with quite a bit more on chucks and stuff. But it's kind of fun to show the um, tree head on the more jig bar. Okay, I'll be back with a whole bunch more. Bye.